Good. Good. Hold that turn. There we go. Hold it. Good. 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 Keep going. Keep going. Go to a smooth stop right here. Straighten out. Friction zone. Friction zone. Rear brake. Boom. That's what I'm talking about, man. Preloaders, VI preloaders, welcome back to the channel, guys. Always a pleasure to have you guys here with me, and you know this by now, or at least you should. For those of you that are not familiar with this channel, welcome to you as well. My name is Robert, and the name of this wonderful channel is Be the Boss of Your Motorcycle. And on this channel, guys, the primary focus is to help you be the boss of your motorcycle, and that means any type of motorcycle. Um, we don't do the negativity on this channel. It's just not, it's no part of me is negative. I don't deal with negativity. It's not good for my spirit. And so that's reflected in my channel. So with that, no arrogance, no judgment, no, no pettiness, no name calling, no complaining. We just don't do that here. And that way we can learn how to ride these motorcycles with confidence in a positive environment, right? The positive environment is important because there's a lot of people that have been riding motorcycles for a very long time. And they might feel apprehensive to participate in a practice session because they, they may feel like, I should already know how to do this because I've been riding for so long. So what I want to tell you guys is you shouldn't feel that way because the majority of you, roughly 98% of you, really don't know how to operate one of these things properly, right? You know how to sit on it and once it starts going fast, pick up your feet and then you're good to go, right? Or you've never had an accident, you've been riding 50 years or you've never dropped your bike or whatever, right? All of that stuff sounds good, but it doesn't mean that you actually know what you're doing, right? It means that you've been lucky. Uh, everything has worked out. And when everything works out, all of us don't have an issue. It's when the unexpected happens, that's when we run into problems, right? But it's not just about that. It's about a whole bunch of other stuff, right? So that's why um, people come out here and we do practice sessions. So what I've started doing, guys, is I've started doing two hour free private lessons for content creators. And the reason I decided to do this is because I say this all the time. I'm one guy with a YouTube channel. Um, and if I can get other content creators, A, to say, yeah, let me go out and, and get some, some practice, right? Spend two hours with me. You don't have to pay anything, right? It's going to be recorded on YouTube because I want to share it with people. But I want them to record it too so that they can share it with the people that follow them. The more people that we can get involved in this, the less this is gonna be an issue in the motorcycle riding community. And if you don't think it's an issue, I'm letting you know it's an issue. It's a problem. If you go to any biking event and you see a gathering of motorcycle riders, everybody that you see riding with their feet out, that's a, indi a clear indication that they don't know how to operate these and their, their confidence level is very low when the bike is going slow. I say this all the time. This is the only vehicle in existence that our heart rate goes up the slower we go. And it just is what it is, but it doesn't have to be that way, right? So, um, and I've already had a few content creators take advantage of this. Tiffany Renee and her husband, they came out here. Um, Everyday Faye, she came out here. Landshark Chronicles came out here. Um, and today I have a content creator that's coming out here today and I'm gonna introduce him to you um, in a second. So if you're a content creator and you have a thousand subscribers or more, and you're interested in coming out here to Pula, Georgia and participating in a two hour private lesson with me, the email address is on the upper right hand corner of the screen. Hit me up and we'll make that happen. You know, being a content creator is cool. Um, I love meeting people and all that stuff. But we have to know um, that as content creators, 
as influencers, we do have a certain level of responsibility when it comes to certain things. And yeah, it's nice just jumping on one of these motorcycles and riding and doing all kind of stuff. But let's not forget how dangerous these things are. Let's not forget that the odds are against us just by throwing a leg over one of these things. We're always dealing with odds. And if the odds are already not in your favor getting on one of these things, the odds are even lower if you really don't know what you're doing. And just because nothing's happened to you doesn't mean you know what you're doing, all right? But you know, it's humbling out here and it's good to know that you can come out here and we can do something positive and you can walk away from here uh, with a better understanding of what you need to do because whatever we cover here, you have to continually practice this. This is a perishable skill, uh, but it's gonna not only make you safer guys, but you're gonna enjoy riding way more. So the content creators that come out here, they're gonna benefit from this and they're gonna pass this on to the people that follow them. A lot of us have the same uh, followers, uh, but there's, there's always gonna be some people that follow some of them that don't follow me. And so they're not getting these messages. Now I am gonna say you have to have at least a thousand subscribers to take advantage of this. Um, but if you have less than a thousand subscribers, but you still want a private lesson, you can still come out here. It's just not going to be free, right? Not a big deal, guys. It's not a big deal at all. It's an investment in you, whether it's time or money. And it's important that you know that. We will spend thousands and thousands of dollars putting all kind of crap on these motorcycles, lights, engines, whatever, but won't invest a dime in actually learning how to ride it, right? being educated and learning how to ride it and how these things actually operate, right? So that's what we always go over first. Anytime I have anybody out here, I ask them a couple of questions to see where they are, see what they know. And sometimes they'll know some of the things I'm asking, but it's a difference between knowing it and applying it, right? And I, I tell people all the time that if I gave them a written test, they'd probably get a hundred, probably. But being able to translate that into your motor skills while you're on this motorcycle that's the key. And the only way we're going to get that is we have to practice on these motorcycles. We have to educate ourselves. We have to get over all of the, the misconceptions and, you know, stuff. I'm a burn on my clutch and all, this, all of that stuff is, it's not true. It's not accurate, right? Education is the key to all of these things, guys, much like everything else in life. Anyway, enough talking. Let me introduce you to the content creator that's going to be out here with me today. And we're going to get started. All right, let's do it. All right, guys, this is my brother from another mother. What's your name, man? Uh, my name's Tim Marshburn, but Papa D on uh, YouTube, Papa D Rides. Yeah, so tell us about your channel. All right, so my channel's Papa D Rides, uh, and I started to just share my adventures and when I go out riding on a motorcycle in this beautiful country that God has blessed us to be living in, mm -hmm. and that we can go and, and see that. And I'm still figuring out everything I'm going to do on the channel. I've been going about three years now, but um, I'm going to try to be more intentional with that uh, when I have time to make videos. I try to make videos at least once a week, but uh, I haven't been doing that really in the past seven or eight months. I've been busy with some other stuff, but I've got a, in my mind a plan. I just have to put things into action. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, come check it out. I am doing some videos. I'm going to do some videos on the Skyline system and some stuff with this bike specifically. Um, and some issues, or not issues, but concerns I have about part of this system and how it works for me. Yeah. So watch for those videos. Okay, so speaking of this bike, this is your new bike. This is my new bike. This is my 2024 Road Glide. Um, and it, actually, she has right now 430 miles on her, so she's not even really through the break-in period yet. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the third day I've actually been able to ride her since I got her. They had to order it, get it in the shop. I brought it home. I had to go to work. I rode over the dealership. And then, well, fourth day. Mm -hmm. I rode down yesterday's third day. Today's the fourth day. But it's the standard Road Glide, um, the new 2024 with the Skyline infotainment system, all the new upgrades, the, the liquid cooled heads, which is a lot cooler even than my 2020 Limited was, mm -hmm. there's a noticeable difference in the heat yeah. that comes out of this bike mm -hmm. than was coming from other, I don't even feel the heat. Yeah. And I felt it on the other bike all the time wow. and the right leg was cooking. Mm -hmm. um, and I added, if you go to the Harley's website, they have different packages. I added the long haul package, which gave me the sundowner seat, the tour pack and the rider passenger floorboards yeah. uh, that match the system that are on the bike. I've added the lower ST type, the new style tip over protection is what Harley calls it to the front and the back, but the back is on back order until April. So as soon as it gets here, I'm gonna add that to the bike. I want it to look symmetrical. Um, and I like to look at these better yeah, than too. I do the standard little chop crash bar that comes with these now, or engine guard that comes mm -hmm. with these now. So that's why I added that. Absolutely, congratulations. It's just a beautiful bike. And I remember we talked on the phone and you were 
saying you were considering it. I say all the time, everything starts with consideration. Like if you're married, when you first saw that woman, you considered talking to her, right? <laughs> so everything starts with a consideration. But I'm, listen, I'm happy you're here. Now, you've, you've participated in one or two practice sessions, right? Yeah, actually, I think I've participated in three. I, was, I said in my video that I want to release the same thing, Robert, on the way over here. I participated in, I think, three. Mm -hmm. And I think I made it almost to the end of one of them. I made it to the figure eight box. Yeah. And I fell, and I just kind of bailed out. Um, and then on the others, I really haven't made it much further past right and left turns. Well, one um, of them, you were crazy. You did like... A, 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 a butt burner and then say, hey, I'm going to come do a practice session. Well, and, you were and, exhausted. And, 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 uh, every time I've come, I've ridden at least 200, 300 miles before I got here. Yeah. I mean, every time I come, I either come from home, which is 250, 260 miles away, uh -huh. or like a butt burner I've done one mm -hmm. time and come in here. Um, I came up from Daytona one time, so yep. rode up from Daytona that mm -hmm. morning, and I've been tired. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it, so... But all that being said, the, the time I came last year back from Daytona, I actually scared myself. Um, I thought I'd hurt my leg really bad. I got embarrassed, really shouldn't get embarrassed for dropping the bike, you're gonna do that. But I did, I was in a group of folks and, and you, I'm human, but that fear's mm -hmm. there. Um, and it was a wake up call. I was up to 365 pounds, mm -hmm. uh, almost 370 pounds at the time. And I did a lot of reflecting, a lot of thinking um, and I've been working diligently on dropping my weight since then, mm -hmm. eating differently, exercising as much as I can with this bad right leg. Yeah. We have to have it repaired. But that's helped my confidence grow. Mm -hmm. And so the goal is today to make it past right and left turns and get to the U-turns and, and get as far as I can. Okay. Um, this bike is much more nimble than the 2020 Limited was yeah. um, and just responds differently. The bars are different. So mm -hmm. in years past, I, I Felt like I was fairly good with slow speed stuff. That's much before I started watching your channel. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then you're watching your channel really challenged me. But at that time, I just changed bars, everything else, and mm -hmm. had to get it. So yeah, yeah we're, we're we're good to go. Okay, good. So I'm, I'm glad you're here. We're doing a private lesson today, and, and yeah, he doesn't have the rear protection yet. So we will be taking the bag over this motorcycle. Um, and I know you mentioned well before I even get into that. I already have in my head. You said hopefully I can get past this. All right. I have in my head what I think you need, but I'm just going to ask you anyway. What do you think you need to get your confidence up? What so, are you having the most issue with? So the most issue I think I have is, is well, trust and believe. Yeah. So I, I have an issue with that mm -hmm. and opening that opening that clutch up yeah. when I feel that uh-oh or That's that right. going down, right? Mm -hmm. um, and not relying so much on the rear brake mm -hmm. because I, I think I, I have, you know, when you have us do that slow roll with nothing on the rear blade, your foot yeah. on the port. Mm -hmm. I was worried about being able to do that when yeah. I came last time, yeah, right? Yeah, and, yeah. and I did okay, but then you mm -hmm. got to bring your foot up because you're not prepared to hit the yeah, brake. Yeah. So you have to give yourself time to get it up there and do mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. And then constant throttle control, getting it loaded and keeping it there. Yeah. Because, um, and, and some other motor officer, when you were practicing in Tennessee and I was just watching, mm -hmm. said, you know, work on these five things, but that clutch or that throttle, get it in one position and leave it alone. Mm -hmm. Set it and forget about it, basically, right? Yeah. Get it there and know where it's at because that's one less thing you have to worry about. But that's I'm right. always trying to play with the, the clutch control, the friction mm -hmm. zone, and the throttle, mm -hmm. and that's a fallacy. That's something that i got to fix. Well, you know, you know, you know and, and so that and, depends. And, it depends because okay. sometimes if I say set it and forget it, and I'm talking about your, your throttle or your clutch, either one, there's always going to be, let me not use the word always, there are going to be times when if you, because remember, we're going to be in our feelings today. Right. And we're going to, uh, we're going to do things based on what we feel. Okay. And we're going to address it as soon as we feel it. And that makes it a small movement. So there's finite moves, moves that you have to do at times when you feel something, you want to correct it. I feel the bike leaning over a little bit too much. Open up the clutch a little bit just to get me to pick back up. Not too much because I don't want to be straight. Right. But yeah, you can absolutely, if you're at a proper speed, you can clutch where it is. Okay. We're, already, we're always preloaded before we mess with the clutch. So right. That's what we need to know. If we're rolling around in the parking lot, and at that point, we're not doing anything slow speed maneuver-wise, we don't need to be loaded. Right. Like some right. people exactly. think, exactly. when I say preload and keep it loaded, that means eh, the whole time you're moving. No. So I can have my RPMs at a regular level, and right before I'm about to execute a movement, preload the throttle. And why am I preloading the throttle before I start messing with the clutch? 
so you've got enough power, sufficient power to That's go to the right. rear wheel when you get in the friction zone that That's it's right. going to go. That's right. Um, because if you don't, you could lug the bike and it's going to stall out and it, you're That's over. That's right. Once it stalls, it's game over. So. Now, and so also, um, it's, so, it's so that you have sufficient power, but once you're moving, what's more important is so that you have smooth power. Okay. Because if, you, if your bike is just idling, again, I'm talking about these style of motorcycles, um, like a BMW or a Goldwing, that idle is smoother. But these motorcycles idle like <laughs> so we preload the throttle so that we can get it smooth. So now when we do an execution, we start messing with the clutch, we can the bike will be smooth. Because we want to be smooth, everything that we're doing, right? Okay. So I'm gonna give you a little a little quiz. Okay. Based on this channel, right? Because <laughs> it's important that we do this. Um, are you familiar with the first five steps? Yes. Okay, good. Because I tell people all the time when I'm doing private lessons out here, <laughs> follow these first five steps and everything should be fine. I'm going to get cheap notes. No, no, no. Put a hat on my head. Right. I'll burn that little bald spot back there. <laughs> <laughs> What's always, what is always step number one before you move this bike? It's already running. <laughs> Make sure it's in first gear. That's right. Make sure the motorcycle's in first gear. Um, step number two. Cover the rear brake. And why do we cover the rear brake? In case you need it so you don't have to go to it, That's right. you're ready to apply. You don't have to have any pressure on it, but mm -hmm. you need to be ready to apply pressure on that rear brake in yeah. case you need that extra help for control. Good. I mean, he's, guys, we didn't rehearse this. I guarantee you we did. But you can always tell people that are watching and, and they're learning. They're paying attention. And I'm asking them these questions because all of this is important. We have to have conversations before we just get out and start doing stuff because I need to see where his mindset is. What, what his focus is on, what he's really thinking about, what his perception is. Because sometimes our perception is wrong and, and it's affecting everything that we're doing. Right? So good. That's why we cover it. Step number three. Okay. So preload mm -hmm. and keep it loaded. And keep it loaded. That's, That's right. right. Preload and keep it loaded. Step number four. Bring the throttle or the, the bring the clutch mm -hmm. just before the friction zone. That's right. right at the friction zone. Mm -hmm. No. Actually, no. That's for... That's for Trust and believe. Just before the friction zone on this, it's just, right? It's just slowly release the clutch into the friction zone. Okay, slowly release the clutch into the friction zone, and then as the bike moves, pick up your right foot. As soon as it starts to move. As soon as it starts to move. Now, I'm glad you said right before the friction zone because I've, I've added an asterisk next to step number four. Because sometimes when people slowly release the clutch into the friction zone, if they do it slowly, I, yeah, I want the bike to start slowly, they start feeling falling immediately, and then the foot comes down. So they don't like the way it feels right from the start. So what I've told people is, if you'd like to, open the clutch quicker and pull it right back in. So in other words, if I open the clutch slowly, you're barely going to see my, my fork suspension move. Right. Barely. But Quick if I open it quicker, up. you're going to see it go like this. And that's fine because it's just going to get me where I need to be, pick the bike up, then I can pull the clutch back in either all the way or a lower part of the friction zone. And depending on what I'm doing, that's going to be relevant. All right. So... My memory, if I go by my memory of what you were struggling with before, part of it was stopping and starting. Um, U-turns were an issue for you. And right turns, left turns from a stop. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so all of those things okay, come back to short starts and stops. Yep. Right. So when you pulled up here, I watch everybody when they pull up. Man, it looked good. It looked good. Right before the last portion of that stop, that's when you don't like it anymore. Right? And that's most people. So that's what we're going to go over first. We're going to talk about that first. Um, bringing this motorcycle to a smooth stop. So i got to ask you these questions. What keeps these motorcycles up at slow speeds? Sufficient power to the rear wheel. Exactly. So I love that we know this. And this is what I was talking to you guys about <laughs> earlier. If I give people a written test, they'd probably get 100 on it. But then when we got to go out and apply it, everything changes. So... Um, we know that sufficient power to the rear wheel is what keeps the bike up. So how relevant is your balance at slow speeds? At slow speed, really, once the bike's moving, the bike's going to stay up with sufficient power to the rear wheel. Your That's balance right. is not playing a part into that. That's right. That's so right. as long as you have sufficient power to the rear wheel. Good. And so it's important <laughs> that we know this. See, this is what I mean. You have to know these things before we just start getting out there. So if we know that power to the rear wheel is the answer, if we feel the motorcycle starting to fall, what's the answer? Open up that clutch that's right. Into the friction zone a little bit more. That's right. That's right. Because or all the way out of it and bring it back. That's right. Because with power, <laughs> the motorcycle always wants to stand up and go straight. So it's the answer when we feel something we don't like. 
So with that same mindset, when we're bringing this motorcycle to a stop, yeah, of course, it's on two wheels. If you're going very slowly, it's going to get to a point where it's going to want to fall. And if we know power to the rear wheel is what keeps it up, what we actually have to do is go back into the friction zone and rear brake at the same time and stay in the friction zone all the way until you stop. Now, we're not going to make it fight. We're not going to be giving up you know, a ton of power and a ton of rear brake. That's when we run into problems. Um, but 80% power, 20%, I'm sorry, 80% rear brake, 20% power because the goal is to stop. So as you're coming to a stop, friction zone, friction zone, friction zone. Sometimes I'll be coming to a stop and I'll pull a clutch all the way in. Most people do that. Just let it coast. And a lot of times that'll work out just fine. Rear brake, rear brake, never need the power. But sometimes, if, I'm, if I start going very slowly or there's imperfections in the ground and I start feeling this, at that point, I need to go back into the friction zone so that the bike stays straight. But I still want to stop. Friction zone, friction zone, friction zone. And the goal today is to put your foot down just like that every time you stop or in stride. That's the goal. It's not going to always happen. But again, the beauty of this is you can practice that every time you ride. That's right. So the first thing we're going to do, short starts and stops. I'm going to demo it, and then you can have at it. All right. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Full stop, friction zone, friction zone, rear brake. Foot up. And I want to see the handlebars doing this. Work it out. Friction zone, friction zone, rear brake. So listen guys, you can't expect this motorcycle to not want to fall at very slow speeds, two, one mile per hour. It's going to want to fall. And so when you're coming to a stop, what people are doing is if they feel falling, means it's time to stop. So feet come down abruptly, front brake grab, and then everything just looks like herky-jerky. So again, you have to go back into the friction zone if you weren't in the friction zone already and stay in the friction zone at the same time you're applying rear brake, rear brake, rear brake. And again, you might be in the friction zone and still start feeling this. So what does that mean? It means you need to go into the friction zone a little bit more. Remember, we're basing what we do on what we feel and we address it as soon as we feel it to make sure it's a small movement and that uh-oh that we feel is not so much of an uh-oh, right? And that's gonna be different for all of us because we're all different, but. Friction zone, friction zone, guys. When I first start, open the clutch. See, open a little bit quicker. Friction zone, rear brake. All right, let's get Tim to do it. All right, Tim, we're going cone to cone. Smooth start, smooth stop. And like I said, if you want to open up the clutch a little bit quicker and just pull it back in, that's fine. Don't pull it all the way back in. Stay in the friction zone, friction zone, smooth stop. Stay in the friction zone all the way until you stop so that your foot can come down nice and easy. Okay. All right. So like I said, the bags have been removed. Not bad at all. Now remember, when you first start to move, right now you do it in a double tap. We just got here, so don't worry about it. Just trust it, open the clutch. Good, good. Not bad at all, nice and easy on that rear brake. All right. Good, 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 good. Give me another one. Excellent. Go around. Let's do it again. That was actually excellent, right? Definitely better than um, the way he did it the last time he came. So, you know, he's been practicing. This is what I mean. When you know what you need to do, Everything becomes easier, but you got to practice it. Friction zone, friction zone, rear brake, rear brake. Good. So right there, that's a coordination thing, that's all. Frick falling doesn't mean time to stop. So you're not, if you feel falling and you're not ready, open that clutch up. All right, let's do it again. You have to preload, foot up. Good, good. Good. All right, this time when you start out, open it, close it right back. There we go. There we go. Beautifully done. That's what I'm talking about, guys. See? Pull it back in quicker. So remember, it's not a... You don't have to jerk it. Just open it faster, that's all. All right, stop. Shut it off. Good. Keep that throttle loaded. 
Had a nice, not bad, Tim. Friction zone, friction zone, rear brake. Good. All right. We're going to do a slow ride. Okay. No brake. Okay. Don't pass me. <laughs> Get that foot up. Clutch. Open the clutch. Open the clutch. Good. 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 Excellent. All right, come to a smooth stop. Stay in the friction zone. Stay in the friction zone. Cover that rear brake. Okay, shut it off. Excellent on that slow speed. Talk to me about what you were doing there. So, I was throttle a little bit, but I was trying to take it, take it in the friction zone, get some power, and then bring it all, it's all the way off. Exactly. Just let it, just let it go. Mm -hmm. And then when I felt, aha, uh uh-oh. Yeah. Open it back up in the friction zone, give it a little bit more power, and then come right. As soon as it got some power, I was right back trying to get it, no power, and let it perfect. roll. Perfect, 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 perfect. So, this is an example of what I'm talking about when I say, I, he knows what to do, and he's doing it, but some people don't know what to do. What he's, and what he said is exactly what you need to do. When you open the clutch up into the friction zone, you're, just, you're really opening it and closing it right back. Because if I don't want him to pass me, he doesn't have any, he can't use the brake, so if he keeps it open too long, he's going to wind up passing me. So, excellent job. Do you feel comfortable doing that? Fairly comfortable with that, but when we started the first cone, I had a brake, then I got to get off of it. So, when yeah. I first started, my foot was on the brake. Whoa, whoa, I had to take it off, so that was a... Oh, now we got to do it again. You cheated. Let's do it again. <laughs> hey, I'm being honest. I yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but when I left here and went all the way around, mm -hmm. I touched the brake when I slowed down to turn down there, but otherwise... I had my foot on the floorboard when yeah. I left here going mm -hmm. back a minute ago because okay. I was trying to not rely on that rear brake. Yeah. That's what everything was smoking. Yep, yep. I'm dragging it. Remember, guys, we can use the rear brake. The rear brake gives us correction and control, but you don't want to use it too much. You don't want to be on it too heavy. Foot right up. Very good. Good. So now right there, Tim's, his turn was very wide, and that's because he's, like he said, he's trying to not rely on the brake. That's going to take time. And right now, you see he's straight up. That's good. Fix his own rear brake. Good. All right. No brake. No brake. Not on the other side. All right. Let's do it. Good. See the handlebars? Good. That's what I like to see. Good. Good. And he's going to, based, based on what he feels. Good. Now keep it in. You don't need it right now. You're on a downhill. All right, a little bit. Give yourself a little bit. Give yourself a little bit. All right, good job. Good job. All right, when you. harder than it seems. <laughs> <laughs> you don't, it doesn't look hard. I mean, the handlebars are moving. That's exactly what I want to see. You're not going too fast. Because if you are, then they're straight and you can't go too fast because then you'd be passing me. So you made that look easy. I don't know what the hell's going on in your head, but you made that look easy. Now, when you come back through we can, one more time, we, I want to do, it again, the starts and the stops. Okay. Okay. It looked good, but now we're going to do it again without you using too much uh, rear, rear brake. Break now, when you made this U-turn, I noticed that you did it, and you said, I'm going to do it with no brakes, right? Okay, that's fine. But remember, using your rear brake gives you co um, correction and control, right? Tighten it up. So if you, yeah, exactly, it'll tighten up that turn. Um, now, you don't absolutely need it to tighten up the turn. You could just lean the bike in. But if you're not there yet, remember, that turn that you're going to make takes about two, three seconds. Then you can come off the brake. But before, you were riding the brake the whole time. That's why. Okay. I was indeed. Remember, guys, if you're just riding in a straight line and going around, you don't need to be dragging the rear brake in that case. Get off that rear brake, and if, if anything, if you just want to go slow, that's clutch control. See, right there, he's using the rear brake. I saw the lights come on and off, and then I saw the bike jump. So our inputs have to be smooth. 
Because most of us don't like the way the bike feels going slow anyway. You start doing herky-jerky stuff and making the bike, you know, pop lock, so to speak. You're not going to like the way it feels. Friction zone, friction zone, friction zone. There we go. All right. Next cone. Good. So now, now we're dealing with coordination. If your foot comes down and then it ends up a little bit behind you, that means you're putting your foot down, but you're not applying enough of the rear brake. The bike is still moving. All right? All right. Next cone. All right, too much speed on that one. Handlebars were straight the whole time. Good, good, good. And so here's another thing. You can shut it off. Another thing is sometimes um, when people start, let go of the clutch. Sometimes people start with the clutch all the way in. Right. And then when it's time to do something, they have to find the friction zone. So just like exercise number three, when I tell you step number four and that is bring the clutch right before the friction zone. So if you do that, like right before you're going to go, if you find where the friction zone is and go like this, if you start from here, open the clutch a little bit quicker to pick the bike up, pull it back in. Now you're not pulling it all the way back in. You're pulling it right here. So when you feel, uh-oh, and you need power, it's right there, right? Because it's very small movements anyway. So as soon as you start, open your hand up a little bit quicker, pull it right back in. Don't leave it open any longer than you need to. Reload. Good, good, good. Friction zone, friction zone. Nice. And sometimes when you're coming to a stop, if you're going back into the friction zone, but it still feels unsteady, go into the friction zone a little bit more. It's fine. Beautiful, beautiful, Tim. Give me another one of those. Pull it in. Good. Good. Friction zone, friction zone, rear brake, rear brake. Nice. Give me another one. Good, good. Smooth stop. Friction zone, friction zone. All right, come back around. Yeah. We're not even up to U-turns yet, but I can see you don't like them. <laughs> Shut it off. What you say? I need to stop putting pressure on myself here. I'm trying to do U-turns here before we got to that point. But okay, well, so so what's important about what we're doing right now is this exercise is forcing you to be comfortable, not only going very slow, but as soon as you feel uh-oh, opening up your hand and closing it right back. It's letting you know I don't need to do a lot to take care of this thing I'm feeling. All I have to do is open my hand a little bit and the bike is gonna stand up. That's what it's designed to do, right? But we're doing, because I'm making you stop, you have to do it in short, short, um, in short distances, which makes it seem a little bit more stressful, but it really isn't, right? As long as we keep enough power on that rear wheel, sufficient power on that rear wheel, when, we come in, when we're coming to a stop, small inputs, like when you went to make that U-turn, I saw your brake lights come on and then they went off. And then when they came back on, your bike went like that because you stabbed at it, right? So again, remember, that's why we're covering it, light pressure. As long as you hear your RPMs, you know you got that power, right before that U-turn that you're gonna make, if your speed is appropriate already, now we're gonna start talking about the set it and forget it stuff. If the speed's appropriate, you don't have to change anything. You don't have to worry about anything. As long as that bike is moving, it means you're already in the friction zone. Turn your head and your eyes, turn those handlebars, and the bike will just go. If you feel like, oh, I'm going a little bit too fast, you can either pull the clutch in a little bit or light pressure on the rear brake, right? Sometimes I like to tell people, just give me light pressure on the rear brake because if you start screwing around with the clutch, now the bike is gonna start doing this, all right? Unless your inputs are really smooth, which most people aren't. All right, let's try it again. So remember, right from the start, preload that throttle, open the clutch, pull it right back in. It doesn't have to be a big pop, but just enough to pick that bike up. Head and eye, straight ahead. Good. Pull it in. Good. Good. Let it out a little. Let it out a little. Friction zone, rear brake. Stay in the friction zone a little bit longer, all the way to the end. 
Friction zone, friction zone, friction zone, rear brake, rear brake. Just a little, just a little. There we go, just like that. Try it again. All right, you're already shaking your head. What's going on? What's going on in your head? So I'm, I'm coming out of the fishing room before I stop, so therefore it's not a smooth stop. Exactly. I know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I know what I'm doing. Good. Wrong. We just got to put it together. All right, let's do it again. Go around. Yeah, so what he said is, I know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm not, I'm coming out of the friction zone too early. So as he comes out of the friction zone at that speed, the bike's falling. He feels it. Time to stop. And it's an abrupt stop. So, you know, this stuff takes time. That's why we practice it. Easy with that rear brake. And I, I can see it. You can shut it off. I can see it. When you go to make a U-turn, I see the moment when you feel, uh-oh, because you do that. And then the bike goes like that. Again, we're not even there yet. But I, it's important that you know what we're doing here is relevant there. And that's why we start here. All right. So, and if you start getting frustrated, I notice then everything starts going wacky. The bike is going like this. Just take your time. You know, we just got here. So the frustration, we're not even at that level yet. All right. Preload that throttle. You, you have no issue with that. When you open up that clutch, pull it back in right away. And then if you pull it in right away, Tim, and it just so happens, because right here we are going, oh, we have an upgrade here. If you pull it back in and feel like you need it right away, open it back up. Just don't open it up too much because I don't want you straight like this. If you're going fast, then stopping smoothly becomes more difficult, yeah, right? Absolutely. Okay. Well, we always want to put our feet down smooth because sometimes the ground is not grippy. It's, it's loose gravel or whatever. Head and eye straight ahead. Good. Pull it in. All right. Too much speed there. Too much speed. There we go, let it out, let it out, let it out. That was one of those instances where you you started it out and pulled it right back in and that was good. But I saw as soon as you did that, you needed to go back in. And you see what he did, he wanted to go back in and the foot came down instead of the hand opening. That's what we're working on. Good, good. Open it up a little, open it, open it. Good. But remember, don't open it too much, right? You don't, you don't That one was good. That one was good. But when you got to the end, I saw your hand still opening. That's why you went a little bit past. Yeah, you just got to get familiar with your clutch. Good. Open it up. Open it up a little. Open it up. Open it up. Yeah. All right, so shut it off. So this is one of those things, uh, Tim, where when I say address it as soon as you feel it, that's what's happening. I'm not even on your bike, and I can see. You can see me feeling it. I can see, and my, and I'm sitting here vicariously through. I'm going like this. Come on, open it, open it, because I see you need power. I do want your handlebars to be moving like this. That's what I told you. But when it starts getting crazy, especially right before you're about to stop at this cone, at that point we need to kind of straighten them out. Open that clutch up a little bit more. Rear brake. Let's try it. But that's why we got to cover this stuff now while we're going straight. Because don't think you're not going to feel an uh-oh in a turn. Good, good, good. Good. Friction zone, friction zone, rear brake. Good. There. Better. Go around. All right, shut it off. So every time you come, well, first of all, that was the best U-turn you've made today. One of the reasons why it was better than the others is because usually when you go to make a U-turn, as soon as you get to the top of it, you slow down. Now any lean that you could have done, you can't do. This time you kind of kept the speed constant, so you had a little bit of lean. But I noticed that whenever you come back here and stop, the stop is no longer smooth because now you're coming out of a little bit of speed. So remember, the way we're stopping here in this exercise, this is how I want you stopping all of the time. So when you come around and you're going to come here, you know you're going to stop here. 
I want you to act like you're going from cone to cone. Slow down, slow down, slow down. And then when you get to the point where you're about to stop, friction zone, friction zone, rear brake, rear brake. Bing! Those nice Indy Ridge boots, Comanches. Bing. Yep, that's how I wanted to go down. Those are nice too, man. I got on my crows today. These are Comanches, that's right. Indy Ridge, guys, listen, if you want Indy Ridge boots or gloves, you're not going to get a better motorcycle boot. I'm telling you that right now. Not just because of how they look, the comfort. Oh, my gosh. And preloaded 10. I think That's right. Know. Preloaded 10 if you want 10% off your entire cart. Check it out, guys. All right. Let's do it, man. The bike looks good. The boots look good. We need you to look good by making a nice smooth stop. Smooth start, smooth stop. There we go. Clutch, clutch. Good, good, good. Friction zone, friction zone, friction zone. Rear brake, rear brake. All right, better, much better, good. All right, too much speed there, too much speed. And you can see the difference when it's too much speed. Pull it in, good. Friction zone, friction zone, friction zone. Much better, much better. Good, friction zone, friction zone, rear brake. Getting better, getting better. I'm always looking at his clutch hand. Nice, one more. Friction zone, friction zone, rear brake, rear brake. All right, shut it off. <laughs> I was just gonna say, that was your best one. The only thing that was lacking was the coordination. You didn't give enough pressure on the rear brake. So your foot came down smooth, but the bike was still moving forward. So that's why you ended up like this. And so what I've been doing is dipping because like, I've been really punching the rear brake right when mm -hmm. I get ready to stop. Yeah. Because I know it has too much momentum for my foot to be where it's going to be at. And I was trying not to punch it on that mm -hmm, one. Mm -hmm. So I was still carrying too much momentum and my foot wound up a little bit behind me. Now remember, we're not going to punch it. All right? We're yeah. not punching the brake. Try not to. Yeah. Nothing herky-jerky as you used to say. That's I right. I haven't heard that lately in your videos. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Everything's smooth and steady. And, and that's why you've seen my bike. Because I've been herky-jerky. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for sure. And remember, the stopping is progressive, right? So, and that's what a lot of people don't do. If I tell them to go from cone to cone, it's no brake. Oh, you want me to stop here? Brake. And that's why it's abrupt. When really it's brake, 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 brake. And when you're ready to put your foot down, finish it off, right? Again, but you're already mostly there anyway because you were braking progressively through that. And at the end, boom, nice and easy. Let's do it again. We're not going to, I'm not going to make you do it a million times right. because I, this is just something that you have to practice, but. I want you to leave this exercise feeling like, okay, good, I got this, because that is going to translate to everything else. Foundation. Yep, absolutely. absolutely. Foot right up. Good, very good. Much better. There's a dip. All right, you ready? Good, good. That's exactly how I like the, the start to look. Friction zone. Woo! Best win of the day. Copy and paste. Good, 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 good. Beautiful. Give me three in a row, Tim. Yep, yep, yep. Friction zone, friction zone, rear brake. Nice. Oh, okay. <laughs> Nice and easy. Open it, close it. Don't close it all the way. Good, 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 good. One more. All right, go park it. Let's let it rest a little bit. Let it cool off. All right, I'm not going to have them keep doing it because anything that we do today, this is relevant. This is what we're going to be doing. Stopping smoothly. So it's always going to be the same thing. Friction zone, friction zone, rear brake, rear brake. But remember, you don't always need the friction zone. I'm having him do it because right now we have to practice it. So when he does need it, he can just do it. He doesn't have to think hard about it. He doesn't have to feel stressed about it. It's like anything else, guys. We got to put the time in to make this comfortable. So sometimes I want to, like I always say, if your, your rear brake is for correction and control, it's going to help you out. But your clutch control, super important. So once this bike is moving, like I always tell people, before you move the bike, yeah, we're gonna preload the throttle and keep it loaded. And we do that before it's moving. 
Because if I don't preload the, th the clutch, I mean the throttle, and I just start opening the clutch, that's right. what we get, right? We get a stall. Um, unless somebody's throttle, I'm sorry, unless someone's idle is higher, then they can get away with that. But why deal with that? So we preload the throttle. But every time I preload this throttle, as soon as I start opening the clutch, I'm still gonna hear it drop. Your bike is asking for power. It's gonna take it from your RPMs. So that's why I'm bringing them up. I'm always listening to it though. Right? But once the bike is moving, right? I'm gonna come back around. I'm gonna come towards the camera. Once the bike is moving, I can just let it idle and I'll be fine. The issue is it's idling like this. And I just don't wanna feel that. So that's why sometimes I'll say, just raise the RPMs a little bit in that instance. But if I wanna go very slowly, I'm gonna do it with no preload, just clutch. No rear brake. As soon as I feel like I need it, I'll put my hand just a little bit. No preload. But you hear how it's going down? Yeah. Every time I open up my hand a little bit, you hear it go down. And I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear the herky-jerky. But even here, no rear brake. If my speed's good, clutch. I just keep the clutch where it is. Keep the clutch where it is and I'm good. Reload, Robin, reload. Friction zone, friction zone, rear brake, rear brake, rear brake, rear brake. So again, I'm not trying to do like, when I'm coming to a stop at the end of that stop, I'm not trying to do like a, a balancing act and hope that everything works out. I'm The whole time I'm trying to make it work out so that when I feel like this push ready to go down, I'm gonna finish it off. But I'm gonna stay in the friction zone until I know I can finish it off smoothly. If I have the space, which we do, we got the space. All right? All right, now what I want you to do and this should be easy. We're gonna do exercise number one, where you're gonna to ride to me, go up to second gear. Um, and then initially you're gonna downshift, brake with the front brake. And then right before you get to me, transition from the front brake to the rear brake. You can do that whenever you want, 10 miles per hour or less, okay. right? It's not really about the speed, it's about what you feel. Cause you can come off the front brake and go to the rear brake right before you're gonna stop. But remember when you stop, I'm a stop sign. So it's not like it's a surprise, it shouldn't be an abrupt stop. You're stopping just like we were stopping over there. All day, that's how you stop it. All right? All right. Questions? Nope. All right. All right, guys. And this is just practicing coming out of speed but still stopping smoothly. All right. That's not bad at all. But remember, this is all about smooth inputs. So when you came off of the front brake, your bike went like this it went back down because you it snatched it off. Right. Nice and come off of it nice and easy. Go on that, nice and easy. And this is not about speed, so you don't have to be coming at me real fast. All right? That's one of the biggest misconceptions about this exercise. People think I'm, just because I said go up to second gear, it's not about you going really fast because you wouldn't, well, logically, you wouldn't speed to a stop sign. You know you're gonna stop, so I'm just, I want you to prepare for the stop. And the earlier you start to slow down, the smoother that stop's gonna be, the less stuff you have to worry about. You're giving yourself more stuff to do and less time to do it, the faster you're going. Good, good. Woo! Now I know a broken clock is right twice a day. I want you to do it again. That was perfect. And I say that was perfect because I thought he was gonna, I thought he was just gonna let the bike um, coast to a stop because he had some speed. But he slowed down, he slowed down, and then I heard him raise his RPMs a little bit, that's why I know he's opening, he's going back into the friction zone so that he can ensure that that stop is smooth. That was beautiful. Downshift, good. Front brake, front brake. Transition. Shut it off. Brother. 
Now here's what's beautiful about that. Front brake, I heard it downshift, yes. Front brake, nice. This transition from the front to the rear, seamless. But more importantly, when you got to the end of the stop, I thought that the first time you did it, you were gonna try to stay fast as long as possible so that you don't ever have to go back into the friction zone. But twice, right at the end, I heard you raise the RPM just a little bit, so I know you're going back into the friction zone. Smooth stop, bing! Oh man, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. All right, we already did the slow ride. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing something now, I'm learning something. This is gonna be very easy for you to grasp once you keep doing it, because you already have it, you already know what to do. When you start turning, that's when you start getting freaked out. But what we are gonna do is we're gonna do some trust and believe, so you can turn, I know you love that. You can, <laughs> you can turn around when you park back here facing that way. <laughs> you know I love it. I know you love it. All right, you know what you're doing. Yes, sir. Talk me through it, what's step number one? All right, step number one, make sure we're in first gear. Two. Cover the rear brake. Three. Bring the three. Uh, and preload. And and keep it loaded. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna bring this right before the friction zone on this one. That's right. That way, when I raise my left foot, as soon as I feel the bike start to fall, open it up to the friction zone, put power to the rear wheel. That's right. So I don't fall. And then come to a smooth stop. Come to a smooth stop. Not an emergent stop, so you don't have to worry about any. You know, you got plenty of room. Smooth stop. So remember, don't just pick up your foot and open the clutch. I need you to feel that feeling of falling, but you don't have to feel it forever. As soon as you feel it, address it, smooth stop. So if you pick up your foot, Tim, and put it right back down, that's, that's the exercise, all right? It's not about, so we're gonna make this easy, easy for me. I'm gonna say foot up, pick up your foot as soon as you hear that. I, I took it out of people's hands because. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I'm sitting there forever. Like, Come on, man. I don't want you to have to think about it. Foot up, just pick that foot up. And if you pick your foot up and the bike is just sitting there, just sit there. But I am gonna always be looking at the front tread of this tire. If I see this tread starting to move, I'm gonna tell you, you're moving. I don't want you moving at all. Pick up your foot, trust and believe that all you need to do is provide power. All right, let's do it. Go, head and eye straight ahead. Foot up. <laughs> It's the first time, man, don't worry about it. And also, make sure you listen to that preload, because a lot of times people pick the foot up, forget about the preload. Foot up. Smooth stop, friction zone, friction zone, good. All right. Not bad, not bad. Foot up. Preload, preload, good, good. Now, it looks like you're picking up your foot and just going. I could be wrong. I did that time, I okay. Well, well I, I, I gave it a second, but I don't think I let it start to fall. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I, I picked it up, it wasn't falling, and listen, I moved before I felt it fall. So at the end of the day, if you feel it, and you address it as soon as you feel it, I may not see it, right? right. So it depends on what you feel. Yeah, but I may be feeling it, not feeling it, like maybe in my brain. That I'm yeah, because I was, that's what I was about to say. You might be feeling fear, not falling. Right. Okay. You're moving. Okay, good. Foot up. Nah, you did right away. Foot up, go. <laughs> Foot up. Foot up. Yeah, right away. Foot up. <laughs> Foot up. Foot up. There we go, smooth stop. Nice, go around, go around. Nice. Shut it off. Now, again, we don't have to be at the U-turn for me to talk about the U-turn. As you're making that U-turn, from here, I can see your foot going like this. And I can see your bike going like this. It's small, but still, it, it, it matters. Remember, we don't, we don't need to jab at the rear brake, we just drag it, right? That light pressure is all you need because I'm not, we're not gonna be fully reliant on that rear brake, we're still gonna use some clutch control. But even if you wanna be full, full, fully reliant on it, that's fine because again, it's a short period of time, but make that braking smooth. Find a good spot and just hold it there. Don't do it too much where you're going too slow because that's what's happening. You might give it too much and feel like a, 
It's that lean. That whole, when you start leaning, you just do not like the way that feels. But that's why this exercise is so important. If you trust that power is keeping it up, you're good. All right, let's try it again. Ready? Put up. Open it. Go. Close it. Friction zone. Friction zone. Nice. Give me another one of those. Put up. Go around. Go around. All right, remember, we don't stop with the handlebars turn. So friction zone, friction zone, straighten out, straighten out, smooth stop. All right, ready? Put up. Put up. Clutch. There we go. That was it right there. Put up. Clutch, clutch. Put up. Yeah, right there, you're moving before you even picked up your foot. Put up. Clutch, clutch. Put up. Clutch. Oh, that's it. <laughs> Put up. Clutch. Smooth stop. Smooth stop, not an emergency stop. Go around, we're gonna do it one more time. And this guys, this exercise is so damn important because this is what's gonna get you to stop putting your foot down when you feel falling, but trust that this is the answer. Trust and believe. That was beautiful. From the start to the finish and the stop. Beautiful. All right, trust and believe, Tim. Foot up. Good, smooth stop. Foot up. Clutch, 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 clutch. Good, good. That was it. Yes, you did. Yeah, shut it off. <laughs> Woo! But you know what, Tim? That's imp it's important that you feel that because you didn't address that as soon as you felt it. It was starting to go over, and you, you went like this. It was a pucker effect, but you stayed with it. With most people, they would have put the, pulled the clutch all the way in and there would have been a drop or close to a drop. So that was good. See, I thought we were only gonna do this one more time, but now we gotta do it again. Go ahead, go around. That was good, man. And that's what this is about, guys. The reason why that's so important that he felt that is because the only way you're really gonna start trusting this is you have to really be like, oh crap, and then say, oh man, that worked. Because it always works, guys. As long as the power is sufficient. Nice. Now remember, pay attention to your RPMs. If you're coming around that U-turn, they're a little high. All right, broken clock theory. <laughs> Ready? Foot up. Clutch, 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 clutch. Woo! That's what I'm talking about. Shut it off. Oh, you want to do it again? OK. Yeah. I almost, cause I, almost, I almost said we end that on a high note for this exercise yeah. because, again, this time, it started to fall. I saw this foot go like this, yeah. but you have to make yourself do this. That's beautiful, man. And again, it's like anything else. The only way you're really going to trust that this is the answer in any situation is you have to go through some stuff and feel, oh, crap, and you start to realize, shit, this works every time I do it, right? If I got sufficient power, as far as my preload or whatever, if I open up my hand enough, it works every time. So, go ahead. And it's retraining your brain, yeah. your muscle memory, that this is working and there's no reason to do that. It's not. Or that. And that's your it's human nature. If you feel like you're falling, to catch yourself. That's right. Yourself, it's right? an instinct. That's right. This is going to catch you, and I know that. But, in but your you got to trust When it. you're feeling it. That's right. You gotta have your brain. That's why we have to practice. That's why I need to practice more, be more consistent. Mm -hmm. That this becomes second nature that's right. while I'm on the motorcycle. That's right. I catch myself. And I often tell people when we practice, it changes your lens. You look at things differently, you look at other riders differently. But what it also changes is your perception of what you feel. So if I feel falling, I'm not saying the whole crap moment goes away, but 
it's a feeling that you associate with normal. You understand that it's going to feel like that, and you just know all I have to do is this. So now it's not a big deal. But before that, anytime you feel even a little bit of falling, oh, crap, you know. Good. Let's do it again. Go around. And then we'll go to something else. All right. Last time, allegedly. Foot up. Clutch, clutch. Woo! You're a superstar now. Give me three in a row. I didn't say foot up. Foot up. Tim showing off now. Foot up. Clutch. Foot up. All right, now we got to do it again. Go around. Because he was moving a little bit. Again, this is not going to happen overnight, so I'm not going to have... We're going to do it one more time, and that's it. He can practice this on his own. This is not something we practice in traffic, although this, this is relevant in traffic. Not this exercise, but the technique. All right. Foot up. Clutch, clutch, clutch. Good. Smooth stop. So remember, the smooth stop. Yeah. You don't have to stop right away. Foot up. Good, good. Much better. One more. Foot up. I like it. So, what you guys don't know is, while I'm setting up, Tim came through here and made a beautiful turn going left. When I say beautiful, zero lean, two miles per hour at the most. So we ain't gonna be here long. All right. Um, well, I'm gonna say this anyway, even though you've already done it. What's your strength, right turns or left turns? It goes back and forth depending on this bike. I hadn't figured it out. Okay. It has been in the past, I believe, right mm -hmm. more than left. I feel more comfortable leaning to the right. Okay. For whatever reason. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm glad you said that because in this exercise, we're not leaning. So sometimes people's answers, well, first of all, when I ask people that, they answer the question, they're thinking about a U turn and a lean. This doesn't even come to their mind because most motorcycle riders don't turn like this. If they get to something like this, they're going to duck walk the bike, right? But you know that's not happening here. We're not duck walking. So, the slow ride that you were doing earlier, that's exactly what you're going to do pulling up. You've already done it. Keep that speed constant. Turn your head and your eyes. Look over here. And start turning the handlebars. That could be another thing, too. Did you ever change the bars on your other bike yet? I know you said you were going I, I to. changed them, yeah. You did? Yeah, okay. yeah, about midway through last year. Because these bars. And that made a big difference. But yeah. these bars are better than those They're were so, for me. Yeah, right out the box. It's just, a, you know, it's. Anyway, yeah. Keep power on that rear wheel. Turn your head and your eyes. Little bit of rear brake, hold the turn, don't do this kind of stuff. Boom, your goal is to be right here in the middle, right? Which yeah. you've already done. And I do a similar to this every night when I pull in my driveway. I don't have a garage, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I have a driveway and I have a, a sidewalk that leads up to the steps going to my house. And it's yeah. a short, it's about half the distance, maybe three quarters of the distance of that lane. Uh -huh. So when I come in my driveway, I have to do a right turn and really? pull right up to the to the steps of my house and stop mm -hmm. and then back it to where I put it so I can leave in the morning well, isn't or the next that time. Something? So um, I do a semblance of this going downhill into my driveway and turning right mm -hmm. every time I come home. Can't say I always do it perfect, but yeah. I think about it every time I pull the driveway, I'm trying to get there and not put my foot down until I get turned all the way and straightened back up in my mm -hmm. little sidewalk area. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'm not completely straight, so I stop early, so I'm not stopping with the handlebars and dumping over, but yeah. Isn't that so. something? This is what I mean by real, real world <laughs> applications, and this is part of his real world of having to do something like this. But in his mind, again, practice is a state of mind, saying to himself, okay, let me make this turn. I'm not going to put my feet down, keep the throttle loaded, turn my head in my eyes, drag the rear. We talk ourselves through it. I get emails all the time with people telling me, every time I'm getting ready to do something, you're in my head. I start telling them, okay, I got to make this U-turn. Preload the throttle, listen to that sound, keep it there. If I have a good spot in it, blah, blah, blah. You know, so, all right, let me reposition this camera and let's watch you do it. All right, so Tim's just going to be rolling through here. Speed's perfect. Perfect. Beautiful, Tim. Beautiful. 
Give us more head nods. Head nods. And the key to that is right from the start, the speed being appropriate. Good, good, head nice. You're good, you're good. And I guess we're turning up guys. that time. All head right, head and eyes, look at Robert's camera. Straight through, straight through. Much, right there, when he got about right here, he looked down at these cones right here. That's what I have problems with. Have Good. Straight through. Head and eyes. And keep looking that way. Turn those bars. Turn them. Turn them. All right. Do it again. This time, forget about the head and eyes. Do it your way. Okay. All right. Well, I'm, 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 I'm looking like I do head and eyes, but like I'm looking a lot of times I'm looking through the quarter of the turn. Then as I turn more, I come to your camera and mm -hmm. I don't know. I've got to get me. I want to get not that I have to, I guess, but I want to be able to get my brain trained where I just look, you know, and yeah, and you turn. do have to um, it's because um, like one time when you went to I said, turn your head and your eyes, you turned them and then your head and your eyes look down. At right. the cones, and then you wind up going that way. Okay. But it's important. Yeah, you know, yeah, it is important that you look right away because sometimes that quarter turn might not be enough. Now, yeah, my, if I turn a quarter of the way, my peripheral vision can still see, but I know I'm a. I'm, you know you're going that way anyhow, yeah, right? I yeah. know, you, and that's what's messing with you because when you're looking down, it turns perfect. As soon as I make you turn, you, but that's fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. We have to get you accustomed to realizing I don't need to be doing this okay. to make this turn. My hand okay. and my eyes, my, my hands are doing the work. All right. Head and eyes, Timmy. Turn the handlebars. Don't, don't turn your head and eyes until you get right here. Head and eyes and handlebars, guys. Good. So what he's doing now is he's changing stuff. So I'm going to tell him. Friction zone, friction zone, rear brake. Good. Shut it off. Man, the brain is an amazing, powerful thing. Just by adding one other element, other things are starting to get screwed up. Because the other times you went through, Tim, your speed approaching, perfect. Turning the handlebars, nothing changed. And that's why the turn was so nice. Now stuff's changing. You're messing around with the clutch, the rear brake. And that's what's putting you out wide. So the speed that you're approaching, right now you're speeding up right before the turn. That's what's pushing you wide. Keep that speed the same. Turn your head and your eyes, and based on what you hear, you don't have to worry about the throttle. You can keep that where it is. If the clutch was working all the way up at that good speed, you don't even have to worry about that. Turn the handlebars, and if you need the rear brake, drag it, drag it, boom. Let's do it. Good, good. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Of course, we'll do it again, broken clock. Do it again. Do it again. Okay. Straight through. Good. Start trying to tuck that left elbow. All right, try it again. I started to tell you what he said, but I forgot. He's mic'd up. You heard him. He had too much speed. Good. Keep that speed. I like it. See how wide he is? That's just a matter of if he's not turning the bars, but that's okay. Nice. Okay, tell me why. Actually, excellent job. Tell me why you're wide. Why do you think you're wide? Probably not turning the handlebars quite enough, and I'm carrying too much speed into no, the... No, no, no. The speed's fine. Just you, not turning you enough? You said it the right time. This is why I love this guy. He <laughs> knows exactly what's the... So you're always, you're always ahead of the game. It's just translated from here to yeah. here. <laughs> you're ahead of the game because you know exactly what you're doing. You're turning the handlebars slightly. It's not a big deal, right? But if you want it to be tighter, just turn them some more. So that, that's why you heard me say, tuck that left elbow. Because I'm looking at you like this. If you just tuck your elbow, it's going to... Yeah, try that. Okay. All right. 
Nothing, nothing drastic, just... Good, speed's good. Good, tuck it, tuck it. There we go. All right, I'm gonna have him do it from a stop. All right, we're doing the same thing now, but we're just doing it from a stop, all right? You can stop anywhere in this box that you want. If you just wanna move up a little bit, that's fine. All right, that's good. Excellent, Tim. Excellent. Right there was a trust and believe moment. This is what I mean when I say it's always relevant. His bike was leaning over a little bit. I thought the old Tim would have stopped and put a foot down. Shut it off. You did that way better than I thought you were going to do it because I thought you were going to stop right here. But you stopped like right where you are. And when you made this turn, when you got about right here, the bike started to lean a little bit. Now, I know I always say I don't want lean, but I'm talking about the lean that people do because they're going so fast, they have to lean. But what you did is when you got right here, you, had, you didn't have enough power going to the rear wheel. And that's why the bike started to fall. In that moment, you opened up the clutch that was a trust and believe moment. Just beautiful, man. You handled it and you didn't pop it. Nothing crazy. Do it again. Broken clock theory. Nice. Very nice. Whoa, and you're stopping. I didn't even get there yet. Beautiful. And the good thing is when he's starting, how is he starting? Starting the same way we started in short starts and stop. Opening the clutch a little bit quicker, get that bike to stand up, and you're pulling it back in. Not all the way in. All right. That was beautiful too, and the reason it was is because you started the same way we started over there. Open the clutch a little bit quicker, get it to stand up, pull it back in, not all the way in, but into a lower part of the friction zone. I was gonna tell you to come to a stop, you already did it, so let's do it again. Good. Good. <laughs> Shut it off. That was nice. Now, in, in, in a situation like that, you guys saw Tim, he's making the turn, and his bike is kind of going this way. It's, it's getting ready to fall to the right. How could you, what could you do to help with that? Pull the clutch in, get out of the friction zone. Look at this guy, man. Left. Look at this guy. <laughs> exactly. Take power away from the rear wheel. The bike is going to go start to fall back to the left and then open it back up. Beautiful. Right yeah, turns next. my turnout, so I'm not, I'm close to these cones, but not in the middle. But, but doesn't matter. That's what got me there. Doesn't matter. Right turns next. Now, Tim says his right turns are his best on his other bike. Good. Good. Good job, Tim. Look at that. Look at that. There's all kind of stuff going on there. There's clutch control, um, using the rear brake properly. He, he, when he turned the handlebars, he's keeping them turning. Do it again. Consistency, keeping them turned. Good, hold that turn. Good, good. Nice job, Tim. Clutch, mm. clutch, clutch. And I know the clutch. That's the thing. I know what to do. Doesn't it's matter, man. It's gonna happen good. every now and then. Good, turn it some more. Tuck that right elbow. Good, there we go. Now, the way he ended, if he started like that, he would have been right in the middle. And again, that's a goal. You don't have to be right in the middle. Good, start turning, tuck the elbow. All right, we gonna get it right this time. All right. Good, turn those bars. There we go. Woo! That's what I'm talking about, Tim. That was perfect. See how slow he was going? Just working it out. He's trusting and believing in that process when he's going that slow. Come to a smooth stop. Friction zone, friction zone, friction zone, rear brake, rear brake. Easy on that rear brake, Tim. All right, straight through.
clutch, clutch, clutch. And when you first start turning, you're, you're gradually turning, and then you wait till you get right there. You look at those cones, then you turn it. Just turn it right away. So evidently, left is my strongest suit now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know. I don't know about that, Tim. We'll see. Good, good. Yeah, that's the only issue, just not turning the bars enough at first. Friction zone, friction zone, rear brake, rear brake, rear brake. All right. You're just not turning the bars as you're not turning them enough at first. That's the only thing going on. Good, good. Keep it. Clutch, clutch. Mm. See, guys, that's why we don't put our foot down. Timmy, 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 Timmy. Hit Timmy. this cone. That could have been bad because the cone slid. There's no rubber on the bottom of these cones. Trust and believe, Tim. Be easy with that stop. Let's, we don't want to start regressing. Yeah, that's right. Friction zone, friction zone, rear brake. Maybe thing. Tim's right. His rights are better than his left. I mean, his lefts are better than his rights. Friction zone, friction zone, friction zone. Rear brake, rear brake, rear brake. Easy. All right. Let's try it again. Good. Start turning. Good, good, good. Open up the clutch. Open up the clutch. Yeah, all you need was to open up the clutch. Which leg is your bad leg? The right one? Yeah. Yeah, stop putting I'm that thing down, the, man. Yeah. So people that are short, people that have injuries, this is another reason why we need to actually know what we're doing on these bikes. Because we don't want to rely on putting our feet down. Re-injuring, re-injuring an injury. Good, good. Too much clutch, too much clutch. I don't know if it's where I'm there. I just don't feel comfortable getting there. And I know I got to let the clutch out. Mm -hmm. Something in my brain is just not working when I go to the right. I ain't figured out what it is. Well, it's a different feel of the clutch. When you're making, the, when you're making a left turn, the clutch is nice and close to you. Right. When you have to stretch your arm out a little bit, it's just a little difference. You know, it, again, it's just something you have to practice to get accustomed to. It's in my brain, man. It's in yep, my freaking yep. brain. Power the rear wheel. I'm not going to fall. Let's turn the handlebars, Jimmy. Head and eyes. Turn the handlebars. All right, forget about the stop. Let's get this clean first. Remember, when you start, well, no, your start doesn't seem to be a problem. I started to say, go back to opening it up a little bit quicker and pulling it back in. But it doesn't seem to be a problem for you. Just turn in the bars. Yeah, it's, it's so you're turning it's too early now. Good, good, good. Keep it turning. Clutch, clutch. So it's that feeling when I'm out here and I, I know what I need to do. I just can't get my brain. As soon as to you go it. to turn and you feel full and you're pulling the clutch in. Right. Don't change the clutch as you because you're already moving. You're good. Try it again. Okay. Reprogramming your brain is not an easy thing, guys. It's not going to happen overnight. There's exceptions to everything, but exception doesn't make the rule. All right. Good, keep the clutch right there. Drag the brake, keep the clutch right there. Drag the brake. Clutch, 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 clutch. I pulled it in again. <laughs> I pulled it in again. Try right, one more time. I don't want him to get too frustrated. Because his speed is perfect. Your speed is perfect. But as soon as you get right there, you get nervous, you pull it in. Try it again. Good. Keep the clutch out. Keep the clutch out. Rear brake. Rear brake. Clutch. All 
All right, but we have some speed there that I don't want. I don't want speed. All right, that time you gave me too much speed, so you're leaning. Good. Turn those bars. Turn those bars. Not turning the bars enough. That's the only issue. All right, good job. You turns next. Okay. As soon as I turned the camera off, guy, he did it perfectly. If it was the camera, then it stop. Yeah, yeah. Well, you went out. <laughs> yeah, so before I say anything, let me just see what you got. All right. Not bad at all. Do another one. Not bad at all. You should probably do the 18. Try. Right here, the speed's good. <laughs> I lost my speed. <laughs> all right. I lost my speed trying to think about the 18. Oh, that's what you were trying to do, 18? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, not bad at all, man. Actually, it looks really good. The speed's good. You're not slowing down. You're committing to the lean right away, but it's okay. a very minimal lean. Okay. Give me a tiny bit more. That's okay. all I need, a tiny bit more. Because what you're doing is fine. You're within 24 feet. That's all I require. Um, that's all MSF requires. Just give me a little bit more. Don't slow down. Stay at the same speed like you were doing. Okay. Yeah, I find myself, because I got to learn to feel that speed, I find myself looking to say, okay, where am I at right before I get there, you know? So. And you know what? If that's how you, if that's, What's going on now, that's fine, but at some point you're going to have to get it, know what that feels feel like. Feel it, right. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. All right. We don't want to be looking down. Like right before he's going to make the turn, I'm sure he looks down. That's fine. Set it and forget it. Look at you turn. That was nice. All right, so right there, what he did was introduce speed at the end. So he's giving me more lean, but he's going faster. Nice stuff. Now right there, well, so far you've been like 10 for 10 with these questions. Look at 11 for 11. Right there, your turn was wider than the last ones. Why? I had too much speed going into it. This guy, oh, he knows all the answers, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah. No, you didn't have too much speed going into it. Your speed going into it was fine. Well, I well, sped up. You sped up when you yeah. wanted to, when I told you to so, lean, you, I told you to lean more. So when you wanted to lean more, so you said... So when I went to turn, I had I was carrying too much speed as I turned the handlebars. No. Nah, so, no? The speed was fine. But okay. because I asked you to lean more, I saw you go to lean more. As soon as you did that, you opened up the clutch some more. Right. Because you wanted right. to feel... You don't need to go any faster, trust me. That speed that you had was just fine. Especially with that lean. That's not a crazy lean. Then you came over here. Off, everything this guy does off camera is immaculate. You made a U-turn over here. It was beautiful. Right? The lean was perfect. Let's do that again. Then we're going to go right. Okay. Head and eyes, Tim. You're looking down the whole time. Good. Head and eyes. Handlebars. Lean it over. Good. Hold that turn. Beautiful. Right turn. Next. Do it again. Good. Head and eyes. Turn it. Tuck it in. Good. All right, so he's gonna have to give me a little bit more lean, and right away he's gonna have to give it to me because handlebar turn was fine. Elbow was all the way in. Good, a little bit more lean. Head and eyes, turn those bars, lean it over. Good, hold that turn. There we go, there we go. Yeah, he don't like the way it feels. I almost carried it too wide. <laughs> All right. So yeah, you definitely like less better than rights. We can we can rule that out. Yeah. Um, 
that last turn you made, your lean is fine, but now we're back to the handlebars and you're not turning them enough. And you're not turning them, you, you get to about right here, then you turn them more. So right now you're almost line to line right, 24 feet or sometimes less left. So next time you come in here, right turn, head and eyes, I'm gonna be standing right here. I know I'm gonna screw you up here, but look at me, keep looking at me and come to me. Turn the bars, lean, and when you turn the handlebars, I want you to turn and commit. Do everything right away. Turn and lean. Okay. All right, let's do it. Commit. Commit. Keep your speed up. You're going too slow. Keep your speed up. Going too slow, you can't lean. Good. Head and eyes, handlebars. Turn it. All right, a little better. Do it again. You're still turning late. He's halfway turning the handlebars and then at the last minute, then he turns. Good. Commit. Pull it in. Good. Hold that turn. There we go. Much better. Much better. Easy. Is that yeah. a front brake grab? It was. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Oh. Tim said, you know what? I haven't done push-ups in a while. I'm going to get right next to this guy. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. You don't have to show these sloppy girly push-ups on there, but uh, <laughs> I have to do them on my knees. So. That's fine. Yeah. And this is what I mean when I say sometimes oh. when you're practicing all day and it starts getting later into the practice, then you start getting, start forgetting about stuff that we've done. But the disciplined VI preloader that Tim is, front brake right in front of me, I think he did it on purpose just to do the push-ups on camera, no. personally. <laughs> no, what I did was, I didn't stay in the fresher zone, I didn't have my foot on the brake, mm -hmm. and I stopped. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> because again, that's how most people stop on their motorcycles. They let speed and momentum bring them into it, and then when they feel falling, time to stop, front brake. All right, I want you to make a left turn from here, and stop over here. Friction zone, friction zone, rear brake. Beautiful. Come back around, let's do it again. That was beautiful. That's what I'm talking about when I say options. If I tell somebody, okay, come around, let's do it again, they're gonna go all right. They're not even gonna think about doing it right here because it's not an option. All right, this time, you're gonna make this turn. Come around, hold that turn. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Come right back here, smooth stop. Okay. Nothing, nothing's different. <laughs> Same way you're making that turn, just hold it. Okay. Good, good, hold that turn. Hold it, hold it, hold it, good, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Straighten out, friction zone, friction zone, rear brake. Anticlimactic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was if excellent. If I had done the ending right, it'd be good. I was about to say, except for the <laughs> except for the ending, that turn was beautiful. I can't wait for you to see that. Um, all right, make sure you come back in here. Stop over here. We're gonna do a right turn. Okay. Full stop. Now I heard the RPMs go up. They're a little high, but I don't care. All I care about is that. When you went to make that turn, you said, I want to hear this. I want to make sure I'm good. But the clutch is what controls that, so good job. All right, come back around. We're going to do it again. Friction zone, friction zone, friction zone, rear brake. Good. Move, stop. All right. From right here. Make a right turn. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Come back right here. Smooth stop, Tim. Easy on the rear brake. Good. Hold that turn. Clutch, clutch, Tim. Clutch. Proud of you. Good. Go ahead. Hold the turn. You're good. Hold it. Clutch, clutch. Good. Good, good. That's right. Trust and believe. 
Go ahead, keep going, keep going. Smooth stop over here. Friction zone, friction zone, rear brake, straighten out. Beautiful. Beautiful. I almost put the foot down. I saw it. <laughs> but I love when I see that, man, because that's that's you fighting an instinct and winning the battle. When you get ready, Ooh. one more time we're gonna come here, you're gonna, you don't have to stop. You're gonna come here, you're gonna make a left turn, you're gonna hold it. You're gonna hold this turn until I tell you to not hold it anymore. And you're gonna come to a smooth stop. Okay. All right. Good. Good, hold that turn. There we go. Hold it, good. Good, good, good. Keep going, keep going. Come to a smooth stop right here. Straighten out, friction zone, friction zone. Rear brake, boom. That's what I'm talking about, man. Good job, man. All right, brother, I'm glad you came out. I, you did great. Like, I clearly see the difference. I don't know if it's the... See, I don't know how you were riding on the other bike before you got this bike. Is there a difference, or are you just this good on both of them? So I was... I'm a little bit better on this bike than I was other, but I was riding and practicing like this mm -hmm. before. I just didn't have the confidence for... And you can see my yeah. confidence wane when I'm trying to do U-turns yeah. Um, yeah, and yeah. leaning the bike and uh, probably to the right more than the left because I had fallen mm -hmm. so many times yeah, to yeah, the yeah. right. Um, but uh, riding, especially when you see me off camera when I'm not thinking yeah, about it, exactly. that's how I ride mm -hmm. um, on both bikes. Mm -hmm. It's just getting my brain, I know what I need to do for the slow speed stuff, it's just getting it, yeah. getting it there. Yeah, so I, I'm gonna say I, like, I don't blow smoke. So I'm always authentic. I like what I saw. I mean, and again, that's why we always start with short starts and stops because it is, like Tim said, the foundation, right? That's the bread and butter. When you get comfortable with that, if you could just remember to apply that same technique to everything else, you know, that, the, the slow ride, and trust and believe. Those three things are so important because it's gonna make all this stuff easier. So yeah, you saw Tim put his feet down a couple of times. This is not going to happen overnight, but you also saw him almost put his foot down a couple of times, right? I love seeing that. So, listen, just keep doing what you're doing, man. Absolutely. And um, that's all I got for you, man. I hope to see you out here again. <laughs> I'll be out here more, for sure. And you're going to see us doing, when I say us, I, I met a gentleman at the Harley uh, release party mm -hmm. named Gino that lives local. Okay. So he and I are going to start getting together to practice, just coordinating our schedules and finding right. a place over toward Concord, North Carolina, or Gastonia, or maybe both do some of each. And mm -hmm. I'll put on my channel invite and on my Facebook invites, and he's gonna do that the same. But he and I are gonna be practicing, so if you wanna come out with us and do that, we're gonna be using the principles that Robert's teaching us mm -hmm. and slowly building. So we may just be doing left and right turns. That's and, fine. Or, or just, sorry, uh, slow starts from a stop, yeah. slow rides and that mm -hmm. kind of thing, and work into left and right turns. And yeah. then we'll, we'll set up stuff, and if you feel comfortable, I feel comfortable, whatever, we'll just start adding things as we go along. But we wanna get that foundation. That's right. I need to get that foundation in my brain mm -hmm. to do this, especially when I'm going right, mm -hmm. and not put my foot down before I try to start doing anything more. So the reason I haven't done this in the past is I haven't had enough confidence to yeah. like share it with somebody else and mm -hmm. bring them out like, okay, we're in practice and yeah. lead a practice session exactly. when I can't do all the exercises, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So, and that's the thing, but you don't have to. It's gradually getting building up there. Right. The only way we're going to get there is to start mm -hmm. and be consistent and then add the next step and add the next step. So that's the plan. And it's perishable. So you don't, have, don't have large gaps in between uh, anything that you're doing. And yeah, what he said is key. I, I can tell when he was starting to get frustrated. Why? Because all of a sudden, his smooth stops are not smooth anymore. He's just right, he's going back to the old way of stopping. So this is a process. This is a process. All right, guys, listen, that's going to do it in this video. Like I said, in the beginning of this video, if you're a content creator and you have at least a thousand subscribers and you want to take advantage of this two hour private lesson that I'm offering, definitely take advantage of that, guys. All right? Absolutely. All right, listen, guys, break out of the mold of the average rider. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll put that video right here. Spend more time being thankful for the things that you have and less time complaining about the things that you don't. Make sure you check out Papa D's channel, Papa D Rides, on YouTube, and on Instagram as well, right? On Instagram, I've got a TikTok. TikTok? I've got all, all the platforms, Papa D. Papa yep. D, all right. Yeah, Papa D Rides. Seat time, and this is a nice seat. It's an upgraded seat. It's, for part, it's part of the Does touring package, right? Practice okay, time. you can say it, man. Seat time is not equal practice time. That's right, and if you have time to ride your motorcycle, guys, you have time to practice on it. That's not my opinion. Until next time. Boom. Woohoo! Thank you, brother. There we go. <laughs> <laughs>